Prime Minister Modi is definitely a visionary. His vision is that of a Hindu supremacist India. If you go back to 20 years, uh, to 20 years in 2002, India's best known, one of India's best known uh, sociologists named Ashish Nandi, he wrote a piece in which he said that he met with uh, Narendra Modi when he was a nobody in the RSS trying to be uh, somebody in the BJP. And when he came out, he said he was all shook up because while he had written about fascists and fascism all his life, that was the first time he was meeting a fascist uh, in flesh and blood and was possibly a mass murderer. So for those who believe it's the same thing as in the United States. There is one set of people who believe that the United States belongs to everybody and they have their own visionaries. And there's another set of people who believe that the United States belongs only to one set of people and they have their own visionaries. The question is, is that the correct vision for the country? And similarly for India, Mr. Modi is doing everything in his power to move India from being a secular, pluralistic, multicultural democracy to becoming a Hindu nation. That's a gigantic task. It, uh, it's, it's, it is the world's most populated country. And therefore, inherent in that, uh, in that campaign is intense violence, and there's going to be more violence, and that is all state mandated. So Secretary Romando is right. Uh, President Biden, I can understand when he says he wants to get an autograph from Prime Minister Modi because Mr. Modi is popular. Of course, he's popular. He's popular with all the fundamentalist extremist um, Hindus. They're not all Hindus. I am a Hindu. I do not support this ideology but he's definitely popular with them. So I think we need to understand who Mr. Modi is, what this ideology is, and then decide, is he the right kind of visionary or the wrong kind of visionary? I have, uh, after four years of being, uh, being in Washington, D.C. and working very closely with both the executive and legislative branches, I am very close to, to the conclusion that the United States is not part of the solution. It is part of the problem. The United States, and this needs to be said, the United States is actively, knowingly, deliberately empowering Modi to become a dictator and an authoritarian, totalitarian figure. Last week on Friday, today is Wednesday, five days ago, Air India, which is India's largest premier uh, airline, they announced in an internal company newsletter, they have prepaid, the term used was prepaid, they have prepaid part of the uh, the thirty four billion dollars they have contracted with the Boeing, which is an American company, to purchase two hundred and twenty aircraft. Now they didn't say how much money they have wired to America to Boeing, but newspapers have speculated that that is about thirty percent of the total value. Not a single aircraft has even been manufactured. Forget about being sent to India. But it looks like that they, Air India may have sent about $9 billion. If you look at uh, the, 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 the agreement that was signed by Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin last week when he was in New Delhi, along with India's Defense Minister Rajnath Singh, that is something called a roadmap for defense, joint defense industrial production. Um, as recently as Friday, uh, speaking at uh, the Hudson Institute, Kurt Campbell, who is the South Asian, uh, the coordinator from uh, from uh, from the White House, uh, he said that uh, you know with Modi's visit, the United States and the relationship with the U.S. and India are going there. He said the visit, and I'll quote, consecrates the U.S.-India relationship as the most important bilateral relationship on the global stage, and that we effectively make it sort of into escape velocity. And he further said many business groups, investment groups are looking at India as part of a strategy to diversify globally new supply chains, new investment opportunities. I think the hope is will be to open up venues and activities for more investment. It has become all about business. And they actually like the dictator Modi because Modi has ensured, as Daniel was talking about, that there is zero opportunity for Indian civil society to object to anything. If this was a normal situation, Almost 15 years ago, when the US and India signed a nuclear deal, there was huge opposition inside India as civil society must take its opportunity to oppose that. Today, Indian politicians are in prison. There is no opportunity. And that is something the United States has come to love. 
I am not, I'm not talking through my hat when I say I fully expect the US to support a Nobel Peace Prize for Narendra Modi. This is this may sound outrageous to you, but I'm telling you that the United States is building him up as the great guy who's taking on China. And I would be surprised if this doesn't happen this year or next year, more likely this year. So I, I have very little hope from the United States, but the US civil society we need to turn to because it is only the US civil society that can now start putting pressure naming and shaming the U.S. members of Congress, naming and shaming the Biden administration for its absolutely egregious and unacceptable involvement, involvement in um, solidifying Modi as a dictator. <laughs>